Hello, and welcome to this special Halloween episode of Cooking with an Author. I chose chili, well, because it sounds like chill, and because October is the time where the weather starts getting cold, and maybe you just want to sit back and enjoy a nice warm meal with someone special. Now, it was brought to my attention during my last video that the first two videos of these that I made, I didn't really talk as much, and I think that was a mistake, because that is what I should be doing, besides just teaching you how to make the meal I'm talking about, I'm also here to talk as an author. So I'm going to try that today, and the topic I'm going to talk about throughout the video is going to be villains. But first, let's start with what you're going to need to make this chili. You're going to need a pot, a spoon, a skillet, a pound of ground beef, green chilies, diced, dark red kidney beans, tomato sauce, tomato soup, tomato paste, Fritos chili cheese chips, garlic powder, onion powder, chives, seasoned salt. Now, I mainly use the generic brand, but that's only because that's what I can afford. If you use a more expensive brand, that's up to you. Chili powder, of course. Black ground pepper. Cayenne pepper. Red crushed pepper. Now, that one is completely by choice. Now, we're going to put a strainer in the sink for our meat and then we're going to get started on cooking up the meat so here I have the pound of ground beef already going so while I brown this and get it ready let's talk about villains now some people will say there are three types of villains some people will say there are five types of villains there are so many different types of villains. It's insane. So I'm just going to go through some of my favorite kinds or some of the kinds that you can recognize. And then ultimately, I'll tell you what one of my most favorite types of villains are. So starting off, you have your big bad. Now, this is like the devil or if you're going to go with something, you know, more familiar, let's say uh, Voldemort from Harry Potter or Sauron from Lord of the Rings or the Emperor from... Star Wars. All of these are your big bad villains. They're the ones that the hero ultimately has to beat. I think these villains are just like a major test. It's a major threat that the hero has to overcome. There's not really a whole lot too special normally about this big bad villain. Other than the fact that everybody else knows he can't be beat by just anybody. That he has gone for so long being unbeatable that it's almost an impossible task. 
which is why the hero is going to receive the glory if they beat this big bad. Now, I have this in my own story. In my uh, main series, The Guardian of Light, I have the darkness. The darkness is this big bad entity that has existed since, well, the beginning of time. And it's gone from planet to planet, seeking out the light of each world, devouring it, and destroying that world. Moving on, you have basically your secondary villain. Now, a secondary villain to me is any villain whose main purpose is to serve the main villain. They can have a wide variety of backstories. Um... I have this also in my main series. I won't say who, but uh, the main villain who actually goes around setting everything up, he is the secondary villain. He acts like he's the main villain, but his entire purpose is to release the darkness. So once he does that, he will be the secondary villain. And... The thing about it is, is that my secondary villain, he has a very kind of generic backstory. Oh, he was picked on as a child. That is usually the trope that goes along with this type of villain. They were picked on, or they just went crazy, or this, or that, you know? It's not really a whole lot special, and they come in a such wide variety of shapes and sizes. Um, they usually are, in my opinion, the more mirror image of the hero. You know, if the hero was poor, they were rich. If the hero is short, they're tall. If the hero is young, they're old. They're usually the exact opposite of the hero, but can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the hero near the end. Blocking the way, being that almost final boss to the big bad. Now, then if you go by Harry Potter standards, you have villains who turn out to be good. Now, I tried as best I could to fit every type of possible villain into my series, The Guardian of Light. Throughout the entire series, you have pretty much every type of villain you can get. You've got the Snape-like villain, the person who starts off as a villain, it turns out to be a good guy. I even have a reverse of that, but I won't go into that, because that would be spoiling it, and I don't want to give you guys any hints as to that. While I drain this grease, let's talk about the bully-type villain. Now, I don't really have a bully-type villain in the Guardian of Light, just because I have so many different types of villains throughout. There was really no place to stick in a bully. I didn't feel the story really needed it. He didn't need someone constantly going against him to make the story work. So, now we're going to start adding in our other ingredients into the pot to start our chili. While the ground beef drains, we're going to put the tomato paste in. Now, I like to really scrape out all the little bits and get as much as possible. 
you're going to need this because one of the ingredients that I couldn't show you, but you will need in addition to this is water. So we're going to scrape off as much as we can and put it around the rim. And we'll get that when we start stirring it all up. Next, our tomato soup. Just dump that right in there. Now don't worry about scraping out the tomato soup and all these other cans because we can just open the top and then dump it in. And we're going to use water to get all that extra. Next, our kidney beans. Would you like some homemade chili? Are there beans in it? Yes. Then it's not chili. Real chili has no beans in it. Yes, Sheldon, I know. Next up, we're going to add in our green chilies. Next up, we're going to add in our tomato sauce. Next, we're going to add in the ground beef. Now, we're going to take each of the cans and we're going to fill them with water. Once we filled each can with water, we're going to give them each a stir. Let them sit for a sec. That way the water can really dilute and soak up all of the stuff inside the can. And while I do this, I just want to say, you know, if you can find a way to make every single villain work in your story, that's great. Go for it. The more villains, the better. We're going to start pouring all this in. Just gave each can a little bit of a stir just to make sure you get the stuff at the bottom. If it overspills, don't worry. You, that's why you're doing it over the pot. Now, I would say that doing this is going to make it more rich in flavor. I'm going to put this on the stove, sit back and enjoy this quick trailer from our sponsor. Looking for a short story to put you in the mood for Halloween? Check out these short stories, written by Sean Connaughton. When a mildly abusive man mistreats his bride-to-be on Halloween night, his neighbors decide to teach him a lesson. A lesson he won't soon forget when he finds himself in the witch's hole. A Seattle detective, Scott Grimes, investigates a string of odd murders. But where this case ultimately leads him, he could never have predicted when he crosses paths with the legal murderer. These short stories are available all October long on Amazon as paperbacks. Also until December for ebook on Amazon. If you miss out, these stories will be available all year round on Audible and iTunes. So don't miss out and grab your copy today.
And we're back. I have the stove on high. Now we're going to add in the seasonings. We're going to start with chili powder. You want to put quite a bit of chili powder. I just used up the rest of what I had. But you want to apply a generous amount. How much is really up to you? Whatever tastes right. Then we're going to put in a little bit of chives. Just give it a little bit of a sprinkle. Now we're going to put onion powder. I already had about, I'd say there was probably about a spoon and a half in there. Add a little bit of garlic powder. Cayenne pepper. I put about three sprinkles. It's really up to you. You do not have to use it at all if you don't want. Black pepper, apply a generous amount. A little bit of seasoned salt. Red crushed pepper, again, these are optional. If you are not into spicy food and do not want super spicy chili, don't add any. But if you like spicy food, Add as much as you are comfortable with. Now we're going to start stirring it all together. Really get it going. Now this meal does not take that long to make. Less than maybe a half hour. Unless you want to let it sit and stew on low for hours on end but as soon as it's basically ready you can just start eating it once it boils so we're going to wait for that to start boiling and we're going to keep constantly coming in and giving it a few stirs every once in a while while i finish talking about villains now there is kind of a rule of thumb when it comes to having a villain do not just have a villain come out of nowhere. Disney recently made their sequel trilogy. And one of the things that bugs me the most. Where it comes to people complaining about Disney. Is Disney tried to do something new. I guess. They came in with Supreme Leader Snoke. Being this big bad villain. We didn't get to find out much about him. Everybody complained and whined when it, we're going to add in a little more chili powder. I think it needs just a bit more. But as I was saying, everybody whined and complained that Snoke was basically a cheap knockoff of Palpatine. Then after he was killed, Everyone's like, oh, well, that sucks. We didn't get to find out anything about him. Then Disney said, oh, well, we're bringing Palpatine back. And everyone's like, but he died. There's no way he could come back. And it's like, well, you never really saw him die. You just saw him falling into a hole. And as we've learned in Star Wars, that's not necessarily a death. But... Snoke would have been a villain out of nowhere. That would have broken the rule when it comes to having a villain. He came from nowhere. We had no new information, no lore or anything to back up who this guy was. It made no sense to have him as a new villain. We know Palpatine. We've set Palpatine up for six movies. Palpatine was the big bad of Star Wars. It made sense to bring him back. It made sense to say he never died. You ever notice, if, you ever, if you're a Star Wars fan, did you ever notice that the Empire just kind of disappeared before the Death Star blew up? It took Luke quite a while to probably get Vader to the shuttle. It's not like it was right around the corner from the Emperor's throne room. I mean, I'm sure if you look at detailed fan Death Star blueprints, you'll see it's probably quite a distance from the shuttle bay. 
yet magically Luke manages to get Vader there in no time flat. I would say the Emperor had plenty of time to escape. It's Disney's fault for not explaining that in a way that, guess what, a fan who is a fan of the series can easily explain how Palpatine survived. He did not have to be some clone. You did not need to bring in some new bad guy out of nowhere. Honestly, if Disney wanted to do something right, they should have made him Darth Plagueis and still brought back Palpatine and had Darth Plagueis and Palpatine be the villains of the final movie. That Kylo Ren and Rey would have to beat the two of them and it would have been them working together all these years. Yeah, true, that would have dismissed the uh, Darth Plagueis novel. But, what can you do? So anyways, moving on. This rule, I bring it up for a reason. With my series, The Guardian of Light, I love breaking rules. I love doing what they tell me not to do. Because of the way I see it, I can take what you tell me not to do, I can do it, and I can do it in a way where it works. Don't bring in a villain out of nowhere, they say. Well, I do that. I'm not going to say who, I'm not going to say when, I'm not going to say what they do. I will say that when it's all said and done, to anybody who reads my books, when this villain comes out, you're going to be like, whoa, where did this come from? This makes no sense. And if you only read it the first time, one time through, maybe it won't make sense. Even though I do plan to have an entire explanation near the end, which will basically explain away every single thing that makes this work. How this idea is perfect. How the story without this ending does not possibly work. I did not originally intend for the this villain to exist. I actually did not come up with this villain idea until I was writing book four. When I began writing book four... It snapped, and I was like, oh my gosh, this should be the ultimate villain. Not the big bad, not the secondary villain, this needs to be my villain. And this is the reason I'm going to say they did what they did. And then, from there, it just flourished. I was able to go back through and tie up every single little loose plot point. It was like this villain... I had gift wrapped it for myself. I must have come up with the concept long before in my mind and not have realized it. Because as I was going back through and finding all these little spots that could have been plot holes, it just fit so perfectly. And it was like, oh my god, everyone is going to hate this. They're going to come out of this and say, no, that doesn't make sense. He never set this up. But you go back through a second time and give it another read or however you come across this and it does it all fits the explanation will be there that will say hey look right here you see this part that's them that's the bad guy and i think that's what makes a story go from really good to epic when you can take an idea and give your readers a reason to reread your story multiple times people go back through harry potter so many times looking for the reasons why snape was the way he was although granted i mean honestly i have a lot of issues with the character of snape you know i mean if he was so in love with lily yes i understand he did not like james i understand harry potter looked a lot like james but at the same time, he should not have been as harsh to Harry if he really cared about Harry's mother. Because he would want to make sure that Harry did not turn out like his father. That's just my point. But now that we've finally got this to a boil, just keep giving it a stir. Make sure it's nice and smooth. No big clumps from the tomato paste should be left in. And then we're going to take it off the burner. Now, like I said, you can turn this down to low and go ahead and let it simmer all day if you want, but it's pretty much good to go now. So I'm going to serve up a bowl. But this has been my topic on villains. 
Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you like spicy chili? Don't you like spicy chili? I really hope you enjoy this recipe. Now that we've got it in a bowl, this is one extra little thing I like to do. I like to add in two slices of regular cheese. Just simply break them up into little squares and start tossing them in. Once you get all done putting in the cheese, you can go ahead and toss it into the microwave to help melt the cheese a little faster. I would say about 45 seconds to a minute usually works pretty good with the chili fresh off the stove. As for the chips, the reason why the chips are a part of this recipe is it's a little extra thing. As you're sitting there eating it, you could put the chip on a spoon, you can put the chips in the bowl with the chili and mix the whole thing together. If you like the crunch, I wouldn't recommend that because the chips will get soft and soggy. I prefer to just eat the chips a little bit on each spoonful. You could eat the chips off to the side. Or you could not eat the chips at all. Your choice. But simply get one spoon. If you like the chips, have the chips. Have your drink. And get ready for a nice, spicy, warm evening. I want to thank you all for watching. This has been my recipe for chili, and this has been my discussion topic on villains. So, check me out on Twitter and Facebook. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. You can find links to my books down below. Thank you all for watching. Mm. This is good, whatever it is.